Hi, welcome to our podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm Kim. And okay, this is our so Hollywood. yes, this is our Hollywood. So we're gonna start off with explaining ourselves again. Um, we're <laughs> our last podcast. We were kind of just trying things out. We wanted to see if we could do one, and honestly, I think it was going great in terms of consistency and honestly even quality. Like we kind of went off. I feel like we were going off. I think um, we but, talked well with each other. Yes. And, but we were just kind of talking about the same things over and over. Um, and then we were just like, this is not productive for anyone. Counterintuitive so, for what we want to do. Yeah. So do you want to explain a little bit about what our Hollywood is? Yeah. So basically, I think when we were thinking about starting a new podcast, we we're like, okay, well, what do you want to, what do we want to do? And like, obviously we want to do it about film and television because that's where we want to go. Um, and I think for me, at least what I remember our conversation being was like, well, like, I think that we should start, we should try to like build a network, build community because I feel like the conception or conception, the, no, the way hard. we perceive, I, words are hard. The way <laughs> that Hollywood is like perceived by others, especially ones that want to go into the industry, is that it's super cutthroat. It's really nasty. It's very clicky, et cetera, et cetera. And like, that's just not the vibe. Not uh, the vibe. It's really not. So, this is kind of our way of like going against the grain and like Ooh. trying to like make the change because we are fingers crossed a part of like the new generation of filmmakers and i think gen z is pretty open to you know gen z yeah. and pretty open to collaborating community com collaborating and being building a community yes um, i think that's where my headspace is you can definitely make it you can definitely add something if i missed it but i think that's why we wanted to start this no yeah and also well yeah. so yeah we wanted to talk about um, like inclusivity in media and diversity in media and sort of what is being shown and what isn't being shown, uh, the stories that aren't being told and the stories that we think should be told um, and yeah, the stories that are being told wrong. We were, neither, of us were, neither of us were the people being shown. Yeah. So we want I, to change that. Uh, honestly, I feel like well. still to the, yeah, I feel like still to this day I am not, seen a character where I'm like, oh, me. I feel like I've never really connected with a character like that. So, yeah, that's just kind of what we want to do. So do you want to explain a little bit, like, what your background... Well, not, like, background, but, like, what you wanted... Like, where you went to school and, like, what you want to, like, do, you know? Like, a little a little, a little backstory. Background. A little background. Okay. <laughs> backstory. That's... When I figured out I wanted to do film and television, I think it was just like, I knew I always wanted to go to college, but I never knew what the heck I wanted to do because I was good in school. Like I've always been smart, I guess. Like I've gotten okay <laughs> grades for like the effort that I put in, but I didn't like like science. I didn't like math. I didn't like history. I didn't like any of that stuff. I wanted to be a teacher for a little bit, but then my dad was like, no. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then my all my friends, I remember it was like junior year, everybody's or right before junior year, so like end of sophomore year of high school. And everyone's just trying to figure out what they want to do because that influences the schools you look at. So I was just sitting there and I was like, well, what I really like, it wasn't ever about like, for me, I guess I was never like, okay, what can make me the most money? Mm -hmm. I was never like that. I'm just like, what makes me happy? Because I remember going to um, SDSU for like a campus tour just because like, I don't know, I think I was a part of AVID and like at one point. So we went there and I just remember this one particular thing sitting with me with the one of the guys that was talking and he was like, I love my job. It's never, it, like once you're, if your job feels like work and you're not passionate about it, then that's you shouldn't be in that role it should never feel like work it should always feel good like what you're doing and I was like oh 
Um, well, the only thing that makes me feel good is watching E! News, so. <laughs> oh, my oh God. And, oh, like, oh watching the movies and stuff. So, like, I've always <laughs> been into, like, pop culture and celebrities. You know that. Like, I've always yeah. been into that. And I think that's what the jumping point for me was. It was, like, I love this culture. I want to get into it. But, like, I was, like, I like movies. And then that's when I decided to join digital, digital media my junior year. And then went digital media in our high school is like the morning bulletin. And that was like kind of our only way to like kind of get any sort of experience yeah. about film and television, which it's not. It's basically like it's, a glorified it's really like news. So like, but it's I like love it. It's like the show, the morning show, like the Apple show. It's like the morning show, yeah. but for like high schoolers, literally that. It's cringy as heck. Yeah. But. So I really enjoyed that, and I was like, I think this is what I want to do. So my interest grew. I ended up going. I didn't know what film school was. I had right. absolutely right. no clue. And because everybody where we live kind of just, like, they just do the normal things. They do business. They do nursing. Like, nobody really is, or at least maybe when we were there. Maybe now it's different, but, like, it was never creative. Like everybody no. did like regular no. things. So no, and I'm first generation. So like, I didn't know what film school is. So like, I was just like Googling schools that had film and television programs. And then Cal Lutheran reached out to me for like free. Like I could apply there for free. And then this is such a long story. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, we're just getting like, I don't know. I fell yeah. Into it. yeah, we just kind of fell into, I just kind of fell into it. And like, I fell in love as I started learning more and more about it. Because once I started, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I started researching more. I started watching more movies. I started thinking about things and like, re, like watching interviews and stuff. So I kind of like, I was like, and then that just kind of was like, yes, I want to do that. And so I applied to Cal Lutheran. It's not a film school. They just have like, at the time, they only had like a communications program that had like a film and television emphasis but by the time I graduated I ended up because they just made the film and television program its own thing so I ended up graduating with a film and tv made like degree so I ended up at Cal Lutheran and it's a small liberal arts college so it's not like all of my classes were dedicated to film I learned about religion I learned about everything and honestly, I think for my personality and the way I think about the world, I think that's what worked best for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would have thrived in a film school setting at all. I think being at a small college really helped me get out of my shell because if I didn't, if I was in like this film school where I was super competitive and everybody was not saying everybody in film school schools mean, but I've heard horror stories. No, they are. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that I would have thrived in that environment. And like, right. I'm really happy with the school I ended up going to. Yeah. And yeah, I was president of the film TV club while I was there <laughs> for two years. Yeah, for mm -hmm. two years. Um, and I helped produce a couple of things. And then my last year, I got to direct my first short film and I never ever thought I wanted to do directing but after doing that and learning a little bit more of how to do it mind you I did not do it very well but no, no you did okay. honestly you were no no not, not even like I would tell you if you're if you were doing bad but I worked with so many like student directors that are nightmares and you did a great job yes sometimes you were like oh my god but also it was your first time yeah so for your first time, I think you did a great job. Yeah, and it was, like, a lot of our first times. Like, my yeah. producers, like, it was their first time producing a film. So it was just, like, a lot of first times. Um, but that's refreshing to hear because I felt like it was a mess. But I well, actually, yeah, it was, it, it is a mess. It's still a mess. We still are working on it. But I'm so proud of the mess that we made because yeah. Daniel and I did that together. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's going to turn out great. Um, I think it's really beautiful. No, me too. I know it's beautiful from what I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. visually, we don't visually. know how the story's gonna come together, but right. we'll see. Um. Okay. So, where did you I start? Anyways, what was your, what was your <laughs> starting point? Oh, um, how you got into film? Yes. Okay. So, 
when I was growing up, I would always write like little stories, like just on anything, like a piece of paper or just anything. And so growing up, I thought I wanted to be like an author because I was like, well, how else am I gonna like write stories? I don't know. I just really like making characters, making stories. Um, and so that's what I just, I was just like, I'm gonna be an author. Everyone thought I was gonna be an author because I would like have little journals with like random like stupid little stories in them. That's so cute. Um, and I would have like, <laughs> my brother would, so my brother used to play soccer. And so I would be forced to go to the soccer games because my parents could not leave me home alone. I was like, I don't know, super young. And so I'd bring my little journal with like stories. Wait, I just got emotional for no reason. Um, and there was this one lady, I don't even remember her name, but I would bring my journal and she would like ask to read them. And so she like would read my little stories. I don't remember her name. I literally don't remember her name, but she was like, she was like, when you're making, or I think she said when you're making movies, because I was, that was not, I was not even thinking about that, but she was like, when you're making movies, like, I want to be like, oh yeah, I, I like read his stories first. I don't know who that one, I don't know her name. I don't know. I might have hallucinated her, honestly, but I don't know who she is. Wait, but I'm, I'm going to cry. Right? I, the, when I started remembering the story, I was like, wait, I'm going to cry. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, um, so yeah. So then I was like, okay, wait, maybe I kind of want to make movies. And so my friends gave me a little camera. It was a little Crayola camera. It literally could film two sec- like two minutes. It couldn't <laughs> do more than that. Um, but then I started making like little little movies with my friends. And it was just like, I would put them on a website and like the parents could watch them um, because my mom wouldn't let me go on YouTube. (laughs) And so um, that's how I kind of got it. I was like, oh, I want to be a director. I'm going to go to school for being a director ever. I was like in elementary school and I was like, I'm going to be a director or a teacher, Um, which is interesting because like we both wanted to be teachers. We we never talked about this. Yeah, no. I just when you said it, I was like, wait, I wanted to be a teacher at some point too. We just like helping people. I think we're both very nurturing types of people. Yeah, and like, because we're not nurturing like, each other. At oh all. no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so then, um, when it was time to, which by oh, wait, we didn't even mention that we met in a digital media class. Or did you mention? Yeah, no, we didn't. Yeah, no, we didn't. Yeah, that's where that's where we met. And so, um, when I started, I think when I was in that class, I was like, I'm gonna make my first short film. I I literally, when I tell you, I knew nothing about short films. I or just doing anything in general. Like the script is not formatted right. Like nobody, I just, nobody yeah, has no, I just was like, I'm gonna film something. And it was like a Purge based, it was like a, basically a fan film. It was set in the world of the Purge and it was a disaster. It was but so when I, good though, it turned out really nice. Yeah, when I watch it back, I'm like, for knowing absolutely nothing about anything, I am yeah. very proud of it. Um, and so <clears throat> I started applying to schools for directing. And so, a lot of that is like you need some kind of portfolio, which doesn't make sense to me because I'm like, people don't That's know anything thing. about it. I had nothing because mm-hmm. every time I tried to like look at an application for film school, it was like, you need a portfolio, and I was like, what is that? What is a portfolio? Yeah. What is that, love? I, we didn't. I think it's very classist because a lot of people don't have access to the tools to make a good quality short film. Us or, in digital media with the freaking cassette tapes. Oh my god! Like it sounds like we grew up in the '80s, and it was like 2015, <laughs> <laughs> which is ridiculous. Well, like cassette tapes. Oh. Yeah, they barely got SD cards. I think like two years ago. Um, so yeah, um, I applied to a bunch of schools for film. I mean, for directing, and so I applied to this one school. I didn't I hadn't even heard of it, but I was just I wanted to be in LA because I was like I feel like that's where there are more opportunities. So I applied to this one co- school called CSUN, um, California State University, Northridge. And I remember like when I was touring all these schools that I got accepted at, I li- we like, it was my family, were, we were all in the car and we pulled into the parking lot and we were like, where are we supposed to go for like the tour? And the lady like told us, and she like looked me in the eyes, made direct eye contact and was like, welcome to CSUN. And I was like, I'm, I know I'm gonna come here. Like I knew, cause it was like, a, it was like such a cliche like film moment. I was like, there's no way this is not the school that the I The way I had that cliche film moment when I visited Kalu. Yeah. I was in Northridge too. I was dead set on Northridge. I was like, well, that's where I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Northridge and I had a panic attack on the campus. And I was like, never mind. Maybe that's a sign. And then I went to Kalu literally the next day, took the mm-hmm. tour. And I was like, I literally looked at my mom. I was like, I, I, cause everyone's like, oh, once you get there, you'll know. Yeah. I was like, that's such a, that's so stupid. That is so yeah. stupid. And then we both literally had that moment where we got there and we're like, well. You do. Yeah. This is when good. You get there, I, you really, know. I remember almost crying because I wanted to go with her so bad. Really? But I thought I wasn't going to get in because I had such a bad GPA. Not a bad GPA. I had like a 3.0. But anyways. It's but yeah, very so, classes, classes in yes. general. Yeah. It's, 
And Ashley, so, did your parents go to college? Yeah, but not in the U.S. Because yeah. both of my parents are from South America, so they went to college, but over there. And then my when my mom was here, she like pursued a little bit more of education. But it's not like I had to fill out my FAFSA by myself. I had to fill out all the applications yeah. by myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole thing. So it's basically like being first generation. Yes. So it is. It is. Well, it yeah, is. I'm first generation. <laughs> um, Which so, makes it I don't even know. harder. Oh, God. Because I, I mean, didn't know anything. It, and like, exactly. And like, I think our school is like pretty good. Like, at least from like the schools in our area, you would think the school that we go to ha- would have the most resources. Mm-hmm. But like, I didn't get none. I didn't get nothing. No, <laughs> so, me either. But our school is giant, also, and I think they yeah. really prioritized anybody that had D one potential and smart people potential, and they didn't oh really care. God, about we the way Kim, Kim and I could talk about our high school for hours. We are literally coming up, coming up with a TV concept about our high school. Yeah, because this so. was it's it's in I don't know, it's just ridiculous, but. Anyways. Um, so yeah, so then I went to CSUN, the lady was like, welcome to CSUN, and I was like, oh, oh great, I guess this is where I'm going, not, not, I hadn't even seen the school yet, but I just knew, like, I was like, you just yeah. know sometimes, and so, um, I toured the school, and I was like, I, I, yes, I actually love it here, um, I had another tour, tour for, like, another school, and I, we, we didn't even go, because, like, I was like, I'm set, I actually mm-hmm. love this school, and so, which is interesting, because we I, we both saw each other's schools, right? But we picked different ones because of kind of the environment. Like I personally like like huge, like I like groups of people. I like being in like a big environment and you like more of a personal like. Oh yeah, I love making personal connections. Yeah. And so, oh, okay. So this is where the story gets spiked. Well, not really, but so I got in on the film program but with directing so basically it's like you're there for two years and then you submit a portfolio and then from there you have to like get accepted again Hmm. and then if you don't get accepted you have to switch to a different kind of uh focus of the film thing um yeah which is weird again but so anyway so i started taking my film classes and the group i don't know the people that are in film classes i was like this is not it this is not it and then we started learning about like, I, it was my first like production class. And now when it's like actually in a production setting, I'm like, okay, I love this. But in that class, when we were learning about camera types and lighting and all that stuff, I was like, this is the worst thing. I made a big mistake. And so, um, Checking out. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't, I'm, don't like this. I don't think I wanna direct. And then I was looking at the other options and there was one for screenwriting. And I was like, I don't even know what this is, but let me, I looked into it a little bit and that's, I didn't even know that was an option, but I discovered that like, that was basically for people who want to write the movies. And I was like, I like clicked. I was like, that's, I, that's literally what I want to do. And so I switched my major instantly. I didn't even like my counselor was like, are you sure? Cause like, if you want to switch back, you can't because like, you'd have to like reapply. Cause like, I was like, I don't care. I don't want to be a, a film major. I want to be a screenwriting major because I that's what I like doing. And the gals were like, okay. Um, and so I switched and I, I loved it so much because in the classes, in the film classes, it's definitely more of a competitive vibe and it's a competition. Every Everything's a competition. But in the, fil- in the screenwriting classes, it's more of a, everyone wants to make each other's scripts better, which is so much better to me, I think, and so much more beneficial. Yeah, everyone... Like, I remember, like, my first, like, actual screenwriting class, uh, we each wrote, like, I don't know, a scene, and everyone was so, like, nice that I I was, like, caught so off guard. Like, everyone wants to help your scripts, and people want to read more, and then you also, you're, like, you get into other people's stories, and you're, like, oh, you can add this, this, and it's just, like, everyone's building off of each other instead of the film one where everyone's, like, secretly going, conspiring against each other, which is just not it for me. Um, And so... That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I just like the high school. Like, I feel like I was able to get the opportunities I did in a bit. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't know. This isn't like a diss at like the people in my program at all because like I really do like genuinely. I think they're all great, but like nobody was ever really like I really want to do this. Nobody was ever like that. Everyone was just kind of like, yeah, I, I think I want to do this. Let's try mm-hmm. it out. 
I have no idea what that means for like about my school, but like, that's why anytime somebody was like, okay, if they couldn't do it in a class, you would be able to do it in the club. Like it was so easy just to like yeah. learn about whatever you want. That was like our whole thing in the club is like, if you want to learn anything, let us know. And you can. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I think that, I think that's also helpful because like, there are some people who might not want to do directing or screenwriting. They might want to do like, I know people who are super into lights and like, that's what they want to do. Like they want to go into lighting. And like, to me, that might sound boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Design. It's a whole thing. Oh, I love set design. I, if I could, I would do every single thing. But that's literally impossible. Mm-hmm. No, that's the thing. Like, whenever somebody's like, what do you want to do with film? I'm like, um, I want to do everything. I want to do, I want to do like, the organizational stuff. I want to do line yeah. producing. I want to do creative yeah. producing. I want to direct. I want to produce. Like, I want to do everything. And I think that's another thing that I'm, like, so confused about this industry is, like, why can't I do it at all? Like, why? Yeah. Brad Pitt did it all. Is Ugh. that what it is? No, wait. That wasn't me groaning at Brad Pitt. Everyone who heard that groan, that was just me groaning at like the culture. I want people to be like, "Why do you hate Brad Pitt?" Because I don't hate Brad Pitt, but just like the culture of um, stick to one, you know, which is annoying. And I think it's especially in terms of like women. I think people are especially like stick to one thing, which is annoying. I'm listening, I just rolled my eyes so hard in the back of my head. Yeah. Don't even get me started. I mean, we will get started about it at some point in this <laughs> podcast, but not right now. Anyways, I think it's time for a BuzzFeed quiz. I think it is too. Okay, so the one we found this time, we did this on our other podcast and one of the episodes, and honestly, it was kind of fun. So Love we're it. doing it again. This Life one is, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is your aesthetic choices will reveal what kind of movie your life will be. Beautiful. Okay. <gasps> Cute. Okay, Okay. this is kind of a visual one, so we'll kind of describe what we're each picking. So the first one is pick your dream home. Um, okay, let me look at the second. I hate... Options. Wait, what? There's so many options. I personally do not like um, a minimalist houses. I hate that kind of architecture. Like the house from Parasite. I love Parasite, but the house, I would not live in that. It's scary. No, yeah. It feels like a doctor's office in a home. Yes, yes. But, well, I mean, that was kind of a point. Like, it's scary yes. like the architecture is scary but people that um, actually get that in real life yeah i don't get it like emma chamberlain i'm like why are you choosing anyways yeah um, or like no kanye west when i saw a picture of his house i was like oh my god you're poor kids well then i saw their room and it was like kind of like it's for kids yeah. but when okay. i saw that house i was like that's terrifying i think i know what i'm picking okay describe it oh my god the top left one so it's like oh, wait me too the one with the moss on the on the wall yeah yeah. it's like okay, a same. type house like with ivy all over Moss, do you say moss? That... I love <laughs> oh, <it. Anyways>. sorry, <laughs> I be all over thing and the, like, like oh God. very cottage. I don't know, I guess I like it because I'm it has history. I'm looking at it and I'm like, people lived there before, character. maybe ghosts, it has character. Okay, Ooh. Are you gonna... okay, can you read the question? Oh, it's an art that speaks to you. I'm gonna pick the angel one. Okay, so what Kim's talking about is kind of like a guitar. That's yeah, it's kind of like a Renaissance painting. Yes, because I at first in college I was an art history minor, and the thing that like got me into art history that like made me like shake in my boots about art history was Renaissance paintings, mm-hmm. specifically <sighs> Danae and the Shower of Gold. That painting will lives rent free in my mind forever. I love Renaissance. I love art. I don't know why people don't like it. And and like, I literally, uh, never mind. I'm just going to let you go. Okay. (laughs) Personally, I am, like, if I was going to hang one of these up, I like the one with the trees and the rivers. It has a little bit of Monet energy. I don't know who, I don't know what that is, but it's like just some trees and like a little river and it's just, it's just serene. Serene. Uh Calm. Okay. Pick an outfit to rock. Oh God. Okay. Honestly, these look like, this quiz was made in 2012. Uh I hate all of these so much. Um, I'm only going to pick... Oh, God. We, I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to pick this one I, just because I feel like this is what I was would wear if I was a dad. It's like a gray knit sweater, some black cuff jeans, and like <laughs> these brown, like... I don't even know what those are, but I feel drawn to it. I don't think I'd ever actually wear it, but... Yeah, 
no, I would never actually wear any of these outfits, but I will pick the green sweater with the flowers just because it has some color to it. Okay. What about the hat? And Are you going to wear the hat too? The hat can go in the trash. So can the gray shirt. I'll just okay. say, <laughs> anyways, I'm very particular. About yeah. The Pick an image that makes you feel calm. So there's some books, Ooh. a little diner, some mysterious shoes on a neon brick path, um, this lady laying at the beach, um, a little flower patch, and then a book, or no, it's like a cafe. Someone's reading a book. Okay, I was about to say the one with the euphoria lighting, but that doesn't make me feel calm. It makes me feel no. excited. It makes me feel it's... literally like amped up. Um, so <laughs> calm, I would pick the meadow with the flowers really i you I yeah like the parks. neon one you don't like parks daniel doesn't like parks everybody <sighs> cancel him <Anyway. laughs> cancel me we're not liking parks i'm they're gross but anyway um i like the diner like the i just i feel like well? i don't know just it just feels like fun in there it feels like a good time did you hear what he said what he said okay riverdale oh oh my god anyway uh pick a bedroom um oh my god oh i already know which one the one it's like a it's a it's like an attic and there's like a slanted ceiling and it looks very rustic and there's like a window like that's yeah it's that one i I was gonna pick that one but i'm gonna pick something different no you we already picked different ones for the other two i don't think it's gonna gonna matter i don't know it's a buzzfeed quiz i'm gonna pick the one with the plants all around okay Ideally, in my home, I will have a lot of plants. I have so many plants in this room now that it's, I don't know, that might not be a good thing. But, okay, pick a sky. There's a lightning one. There's a sunset. Or maybe, wait, is that a sunrise? I don't know. There's, like, clouds. Um, there's a sun. That's a sunrise. And then there's, like, pink and yellow at the beach. And then there's, like, a galaxy. I'm a sucker for a pink and yellow sky. So, although I, I hate- but- You hate what? I don't like the beach, but I love a pink and yellow sky. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm going to yeah. pick the lightning one. Okay, pick a street. You could see yourself strolling down. Um, there's Italy. That's Italy, right? <laughs> that looks very Mamma Mia-ish. And then, um, okay, I don't know anything. Italy? Wait, which one are you talking about? The blue the one? The second one. Yeah. Is that not Italy? No, no, no. That's the first one. The first slow. one. Yeah. The first one, the first one. Mamma mia. <laughs> the first Spain. one. Spain. Okay. I mean, Spain. it doesn't. Okay, anyway, I'm going to pick the third one. It's like a mysterious suburban street. Um, I'm going to pick the one that looks like New York. See, I was going to pick that, but then I just like, I got grossed out. I don't know. <laughs> I love New York. It's so gross, but I yeah, love it. It is gross. <laughs> Pick an image that makes you feel happy. There's a corgi. There's someone making cupcakes. There's a club. There is someone blowing a huge bubble. They, oh, my God, the plants. And then there's a little, um, like, people having, like, an outdoor movie night. I'm between the plants and the movie people night. People having outdoor I'm going to do movie night. Okay, I'll do plants just because you said we're picking different ones. Um, okay. Pick an artist, artist you vibe I with. Ew! <laughs> Okay, um, Lord, Hosier, Hosier, Hosier. Okay. Hosier. Oh my God, I don't know. I used to love him though. Anyway. Taylor Swift, um, Shawn Mendes, The Weeknd, or Billie Eilish. Something's wrong with my thing. I hear if you guys if you guys hear me sounding like a robot, that's not my fault. Okay, who who do you pick? I don't know. I'm between Lord and The Weeknd. I'm okay, gonna go with Lord and Girl Power. Wait, is this pick an artist you okay? Oh, I thought this was someone you want to hang out with. Um I'm gonna go with Billie Eilish. I was between Billie Eilish and Taylor Swift, but I don't know. I feel like Taylor Swift would hate me. I feel that wasn't like even the question, Billie Eilish fits your vibe more me. and Lord definitely fits my vibe more. Yes. Okay, great, that's settled. And finally, pick a planet. Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Uh, ooh. These are great pictures. I'm what? gonna don't make so much sense. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What'd you even pick for the planet? I picked Saturn. Okay, I'm gonna pick uh, Mercury. Oh, God. Okay, you go first. 
By the way, just to remind everyone, the question was, it was be different forever. Your aesthetic choices will reveal what kind of movie your life would be. So like genre. Okay, go ahead. A classic rom-com. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> in your movie, in the movie of your life, you'd be the star of romantic comedy. You have a lighthearted spirit and a big old heart. You've got your head in the clouds and have always dreamed of having happily ever after, after that straight after a, out of a fairy tale. You're a little scared of change, but you never know what or who it might bring your way. Why did I say talk like a freaking Disney princess? Like I don't know. Anyway, that was weird. Okay. Anyway, I got too my, excited about this. Yeah, I kind of I'm really like mine too. Um, I didn't want it to say horror movie because I was like, if it's a horror movie, that's, I don't want my life to be a horror movie. But you, I got an epic fantasy, wizards, knights, mythical beasts, all those are waiting for you. In the movie of your life, you'd be the chosen one in an epic fantasy. You're brave, bright, and have a whole lot of heart. Sure, you might not think you're cut out for it at first, but you might be surprised at how much you're capable of. You're a hero in the making. I we we bought that off. Wow. Okay, BuzzFeed. Yeah. I wow. I was being shocked at BuzzFeed because they actually got it right for once. That makes so much sense, like for both of us. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We're just wow. Wow. BuzzFeed. Hats off. Come on, give it up. That was a good quiz. Okay, I'm gonna put that in the. Oh my god, I don't even know where I'm gonna put it. Maybe in like the link to the. Um, our Hollywood Instagram somewhere. I'll put it somewhere because this is a good quiz. Highly recommend. Okay. So. When you get yes, that's so fun. Um, okay, so the last thing we're gonna gonna do, we'll kind of rush this a little bit because we talked so much. Um, our life. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how long we've been recording. Oh, 39 minutes. Okay, we're fine. We can talk for like 20 more. Um, so we wanted to talk about the movies and maybe one or two directors that influenced us the most not in terms of these are not our favorite movies by any means but they're the movies that like inspired us and also shaped the movies that we like now and the movies that we want to make um and we'll explain that these a little bit more intro films yes okay do you want to should we start off with the directors yeah okay go ahead my director that like kind of was like my first favorite director was um Sofia Coppola flex I think because um, like it's quality I just remember specifically I think the first Sofia Coppola movie I watched was The Bling Ring obviously oh like obviously yeah. that's really on brand for me I feel yeah. like. um and I just remember being like whoa it's like my favorite things ever like pop culture teens being dumb like and then good aesthetic, I feel like. It's yeah. just, I love that. So that was my first introductory to her. And then I started becoming obsessed because honestly, like, I maybe I just wasn't paying attention before, but like, or like, she was the first female director that I had ever heard of. And I was like, and then I think when I first watched her movie, I saw Sofia Coppola and I was like, wait, that's a woman. And I think it cl- that was the first time it clicked for me, like, oh my god there's like no women directors that are like big that like make big movies like with big budgets like how she does at the time there's a little bit more now but still not in even comparison to how many men there are directors. so like mind you like i watched the bling ring probably like the year it came out which is probably like what 2014 2013 something around there so like that wasn't even that long ago you know what i mean and then I started watching Marie Antoinette, and I absolutely was floored. Mm. Floored. The aesthetic I, is so good. Yeah. Costuming. And I think she does a really good job of, like, sticking to an aesthetic. And she does yes. different ones. And I think that's amazing because a lot of directors have, like, the same aesthetic, which we love to some degree. But yeah. I like how she can, like, you can tell she, like, yeah. that was her print on a movie, but it's they're all different like they're all standalone films you know what i mean and lost in translation too big fan <gasps> big fan of lost in translation a little scary on the dynamic but yeah love the story the concept is there the um you know what what i was thinking about when you were, you mentioned that you saw her name at the end i love when you're like watching a random movie in the theaters and it's like ending and it's directed by it, and it's like a woman and you're like <gasps> it's just you're like oh wait I, yeah. things make sense now you know 
because you see, you see like certain th- like oh, birds of prey there's this one little is like one little moment but it's like harley quinn gives i think it's like black canary she gives her a head like a a hairband oh my god what yeah, is that a hair tie. yeah a hair tie and i was like wait that was so good and then i saw yeah. i for me being stupid i didn't know that the director was a woman and then i saw it at the end and i was like that explains so much and that's so awful that we just assume it's a man. That's yeah. That's so awful. That sucks. Okay, my director, well, I have one that, I'll go through it quickly, but I have one that's kind of like the first one I knew about, but then the first one that kind of like inspired me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So the first big director that I knew about was Alfred Hitchcock. I think I found out about him in like sixth grade, because like my science teacher, I don't know, that man would not teach us science, but... He was like, he gave us like a 30 minute speech on like Psycho. And he was like, oh yeah, that film like changed like everything. And like, it's like the first slasher film and like blah, blah. And I was like, wait, that's, yeah, okay. And so I went to the library and I rented them. Cause you know, that was like a thing. Like you could rent movies from the library. Uh, Oh wait, now that I think about all these movies I rented from the library. Okay. Uh, (laughs) I'm sorry. It's cause I was looking at this. And so I watched Psycho and I was like, that was the first time I had ever seen a black and white film. And I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Now looking back at it, yes, I know there are problems with it, but yeah. when I, I was a child. I appreciate things as long as you are acknowledging and like yeah. not criticizing it. And you know that there are problems with it and you accept that there are problems with it. And you don't just pretend that there isn't because that, that's why I think that's the issues. Issue. And then the other director, which is a more recent one, is David Sandberg. Um, he directed, I think so far he's only directed Lights Out um, the second Annabelle movie and Shazam. But the reason I think he's so cool is because he literally, they discovered him from YouTube. So he made this short film and then um, I think Blumhouse reached out mm-hmm. and they were like, we want you to make that into a full feature film. And then from there, he got a deal to make a, like an Annabelle movie, which is huge. That's like one of the major like horror franchises. And then from there, DC was like, do you want to make a superhero movie? Which is like wild to me. Like he just like in those were his first three films, which is crazy to me. Um, so I just think it's really cool that, like, we're seeing directors come from other places. It's not just, like, oh, who has the money and who has the resources and who knows the people now. It's, like, they found him off of YouTube, which is the coolest thing ever. Anyway. So, yeah, those are my directors. Cool. Okay, you can go ahead and start with your little movies. We'll go one by one. And, like, okay. we'll try to keep the, like, one or two minutes each film, because if not, <laughs> we could go on forever. Yeah, now that I'm looking at our list, like, side by side, it just makes so much sense for us. Yeah, it really does. Um, I feel like both of us, like, are very on brand. Anyway, <laughs> my first movie is Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I definitely am one of those people that base my personality off of main characters, 100%. But, like, not now, more so, more so, because, like, now I'm, like, kind of an adult, so, like, now I, like, have grown into my own personality, but when I first watched Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, I don't remember exactly where I watched it, I feel like I watched it on Disney Channel or something, like, it just came on, because Lindsay Lohan was huge, and I remember that was the first character that I can remember that I was, like, besides, like, a Disney princess, that I was, like, I want to be like her. I want to be like her. I absolutely love her to every bits of pieces. Like, because she wasn't a perfect character. She was a brat. Like, she genuinely was a brat. And, like, but she also, like, I loved her spirit in the aspect that, like, she was a fangirl and she wasn't afraid to be herself because, like, everybody dressed. Like, she also the fashion. Like, I loved how she dressed and she dressed so cool. And, like, I she was a fangirl. She, like, was dramatic. And, like, <laughs> I love that. Like, that's just how I am a pretty dramatic person. Like, yeah. I'm a Libra. I'm incredibly emotional. Anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and No, but, yeah. I see what you mean with the whole, like, you take your personality. When you're, like, younger, I think you see something and you, like, try to absorb it. And, like, you're, like, well, people like this, so I'm going to try to be it. So I think that's kind of how, like, personalities are shaped. You're a child. Because yeah. children observe, uh, you really do, ob- you're literally a sponge when you're a child. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely love that. And I loved how, like, now I rewatched it, obviously it has problems. Like, it's a little problematic, as is everything that has aged from the 2000s. But I, one thing I noticed now that I didn't notice before was that the, like, because the villain was, like, Megan Fox's character, Carla Santini, and... <laughs> 
like the issue wasn't with the boy like the issue was with each other and I thought like I when I rewatched that I was like whoa the issue wasn't like that they were fighting over a boy the issue was that they were competing with each other and although it was a little bit toxic whoa it wasn't well. over a boy and I think that's that's something to note that is actually I I literally don't like I've never seen this movie I know nothing about it but that is that is tea right it's I love that movie and I also like I thought I was gonna when I was younger I thought I was gonna go to Juilliard and I literally thought I was gonna mm. be a singer and like be in musical theater so like right. in the in the movie she that's like her thing is like she is like the lead in the play the musical. so like basically what you took from this one is the sort of the personality of the main character and the, the aesthetic, aesthetic of it fashion okay yeah see. you have well you you're gonna watch it because we have well our- yeah but the end scene with with the musical the set pieces alone the because it's like oh what is the <laughs> place that they base it off of i can't remember right now we'll talk about it at a different time okay 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 um so my first movie is <laughs> literally something completely different so my first movie is charlie and the chocolate factory the johnny depp version not the original version um I have I, I, I remember it's so good. I know I remember I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes and it's the worst Rotten Tomato score. And I, I don't understand. I think it's a great movie. Um, one of the first movies I remember going to a movie theater and watching. Oh really? I don't think I don't think I saw this in theaters. I think I, I again I think I rented it like at the library like as soon as it came out because they had like a new releases section and I watched it. We watched it a hundred times. My parents had to buy the DVD because I would watch it like every morning. Um, but, wait, how old was I? I? It definitely wasn't that young. But the reason I think I love this movie so much, Tim Burton made it, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I should have Googled that. Anyway, but the reason I think I love this movie was, number one, the, the aesthetic and the colors of it and how each room was completely different. The well, exact opposite. I was like, but it still felt in the same world. You were still in Willy Wonka's universe. Yeah, at the time, they kind of went off. It did. And a lot of it, yes, there's a lot of CGI. Yes, there are a lot of effects. But some of it was genuinely set pieces. And okay. you can tell. And Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is supposed to be very campy. Like, it, the point of it is, like, it's, it's not supposed to make sense. Yeah. But also, I feel like in, in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, like the original one, Willy Wonka is terrifying. And he's a creep. And no. not saying that this one isn't. But he definitely, he, he felt more like a damaged e-boy than the original one. The, the original one, literally a pervert. He like was like, "Oh, come, children, to my little factory." And the new one, he was like, I just saw Willy Wonka, Johnny Depp's Willy Wonka, a damaged e boy. Is that not what he is? He literally was made this whole chocolate factory to rebel against his dad, who was a dentist. That was the whole thing, which I I really like that backstory to Willy Wonka. No, and it makes sense. I'm just like I never thought to. I love Willy Wonka. I, I love that character. I love that. You seen the Willy Wonka TikToks, by the way? Ugh, we're not talking about that. Um, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, and, oh, another thing that I took from it, it was like, it was the first time, I talk about this a little bit more, but um, it was the first time I saw an ensemble cast where each character is completely different, brings something to the table, it's so well written. And like, you can, I can visually remember every single one of those characters. Not a mm-hmm. single one of them blends into the background. They are each there and they like, each like, they stay on their ground. Maybe not Mike. But like they all the other ones, both love ensemble casts. Yes, I love it. I think that's why I like TV shows a little more because like you can explore the ensemble cast mm-hmm. more than movies can. But anyway, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Next one for me is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Don't drag me. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> I remember because I remember when this movie got announced and one of my best friends in middle school was like, oh my gosh, did you hear about this movie? And she showed me the trailer and I was like, what is this? I, I'm, I was like fully entranced. I was like, yeah, what is that? I need to know what that is. And then she told me it's a graphic novel thing. And then I read all the graphic novels. I made my poor mother buy me all the graphic novels. Like granted, she would make me finish it first and then buy me the next one, but okay. like it's, it's a graphic novel. So I'm gonna get through it pretty fast, right? Yeah, so yeah. like pretty much like yeah. every week we're at Barnes and Nobles, like <laughs> racking in those freaking points, bro. Like I 
was I loved it. I absolutely was enamored with these graphic novels. And then my best friend at the time and I went to go see the movie in the theaters, like I on the first day, and the hype was real. The hype is real. I like I don't remember exactly what happened when we we're watching the movie, but like I just remember being in love with it. And then I like moved on, like life went on. Cause I was in middle school when it came out. And then when I got to college and like, we started had to think, started to have to think about like the movies that like impacted us um, in school. I was like, I was researching and then I was like, Oh my gosh, this movie. And I, it completely took over my life. Completely took over my life a second time. I watched it all the time. Got the DVD. I watched every single thing I could find on YouTube about it because I think Edgar Wright is such a good director. You can tell everything is meticulously planned out. You can tell that he puts a lot of care into these characters and like making sure everything kind of makes sense. Like even though if it doesn't like make sense in like the physical world, like it makes sense storyline wise, I guess, if that makes any sense. But I love the aesthetic. I love the soundtrack editing and um ensemble cast like at the time of that movie like chris evans wasn't captain america anna kendrick hadn't made pitch perfect brie larson wasn't an did, is brie larson an oscar winner I think uh yeah she, yeah for room maybe yeah, she wasn't she didn't have her oscar she was like not that big at all and like i and aubrey plaza too like it, <gasps> I it's, it's an amazing cast and all of them hold their own every time somebody comes on the screen it's like yes that's their moment and i just absolutely love that and the editing is so good because it really does honor the source material like yes. it feels like you're in a comic book and i don't think a lot of like book to tv slash movie adaptations do well at doing that but edgar wright is like a nerd at heart so I think that's why it works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I will give Edgar Wright that. I personally am not such a huge fan of the movie, but you're right. It's a great cast. They all, they're like, they take up the screen. Like, they, they know what they're doing. And they were all very, like, new. And, yeah, Edgar Wright went off. He's, it's very stylized. You know what world you're in immediately as soon as you get there. And it's, you, it, you have a fun time, basically. Um, so, my second it's one. It's such a fun It's not like that. Yeah yeah it's not like a movie that i'm like oh my god i'm taking this to my life it's like i just had a good ass time watching it. yeah like, period. and sometimes sometimes that's all you need i'm a big fan not every not every movie needs to be, to be awesome. Awesome winning not every movie needs to be like super some yeah. movies are just a good time anyway yeah Anyway, speaking of some movies just need to be a good time. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Well, so my second movie that I wrote down that kind of influenced me was Scream. Because I, th- at this point, I was already super into horror. So maybe I shouldn't have put this in this order. Like, th- I didn't really think of this order. But I saw this maybe, like, sophomore year of high school. I don't know. They were all on Netflix at this point. And so um, my friend was like, oh, you should watch the Scream movies. Or something. It was like an offhand comment. She doesn't even remember telling me to watch them. But... I saw the first one and I was like, oh my God, I loved that so much because I liked that it wasn't taking it seriously. It was very much um, satire of the genre and of those kind of movies, but it was still scary. I I remember I at night, I literally, I slept with the light on because I thought he was going to pop out of my closet. Um, and I don't know, it was just spooky the first time I saw it. And then... <laughs> Uh, also, I liked the, I don't know how to describe it. I guess it's the aesthetic, but it's also like, like there were like some flashes of color, but it was still very gloomy. And I love that. I love when like, there are only a specific things that are super colorful. And also Drew Barrymore in that opening scene. Iconic. She went off. She was on it for like 10 minutes and she went off. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm like trying to go quick. I didn't know that she was only in 10 minutes. Yeah, sorry. I can't. Harry Spray, this one will be quick. Um, uh, this is like the first movie I remember being super hyped about going to see in the movie theater. And I absolutely had, had such a good time. Like I literally got like, I went to the Regal in Virginia 
I lived in Virginia at the time. I got the little hairspray. Like, cause you know how the foam, they have foam fingers. They had like a foam hat that was crazy turn Blanche's hair. And like, I just had like a whole experience in the theater because the workers were like, so they thought it was so funny that like, I was so excited to see this movie and I just had a good ass time. And <laughs> cause I was a cute kid. Like I was very talkative and like, you know, big personality, whatever. So like anytime I was super excited about anything, like the workers that the established, that at least one of my grandma tells me, I don't remember this, but she was like, anytime you got hyped about something, the workers would be like, all up in your your area which is kind of cute um and I think the biggest thing that I didn't really like think of at the time but I definitely think that's why I liked it so much was because it was kind of like the first plus size character I saw that was the main character mm. and like yeah I've never been skinny in my life so which isn't everything. I don't really care. I'm really fine with myself. But <laughs> at the time, I was like, I was never bullied about my weight, but like, I was definitely like my family always called me out on it. So I think it was I obviously at the time of watching because I was like eight, I didn't understand the like gravity of like what they were actually talking about. But I saw that she was always super positive, And I was like, and she's like a similar weight to me. So I was like, <gasps> that's what I took from hairspray. Yeah. And also Zach Efron. So. Okay. <laughs> you went to, okay like, this imagine Zach Efron being into you as a plus size girl. Come on. A girl can dream. <laughs> <laughs> um I was literally about to say something, but I was like, oh, I literally found out this the other day that hairspray came out in between high school musical two and three. For some reason I came yeah. I thought like hairspray came out like Five years after High School Musical 3. No, I, it was I, in the I, midst of the hype of Zac Efron. That's, that's another reason why I was so into it. Yeah. And then when I, 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 I didn't know how to research about movies beforehand. So when I got into the theater and I saw that he was love interest for Tracy, I was like, <laughs> I had, I don't know. Myself in 2009 was having a good time. Yeah. Um, before everything just, oh my God. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My AirPods are not okay right now, but. Um, so speaking of Zac Efron, my, my third movie is High School Musical, which, listen, listen, guys, I know it's not that great. Watching it back, I, honestly, sometimes I can't even get through it. Well, anyway, but I, pers- my favorite one is the second one. It's the best movie, but that's not the point. The point is, did, I didn't know what a musical was, and I saw this, and my, my world was rocked, I think. Oh. This was the first musical I saw. Well, does Charlie and the Chocolate Factory count? No. no. I mean, they have, like, numbers, but that, I don't think it counts. I don't think it counts. Because, yeah. like, in High School Music, like, in Charlie and Chocolate Factory, they're, like, they accept, I don't know, like, they, they're aware that the numbers are happening, but in High School Musical, they're, like, ah, and then they just, the day keeps going on, you know? And that's, I think, a traditional musical. Um, but I was, like, this is crazy. And then I think that's why I like Harry Spree so much and all those other movies, because I saw High School Musical, and I was, like, it's so interesting. This is it. Yeah, I, I was exposed to musicals so young. Like I was in elementary school, and Sound of Music was my life. Well, same. I think high school music. I saw the third one in the theaters, so I definitely was like, oh, I was there for the ride, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, I remember one time we went to Macy's and we asked if they have had they had any, um, like high school musical shirts for guys, and they did <laughs> not. And thank God they didn't, because can you imagine me showing up to school wearing oh, a high school musical shirt? I had high school musical merch. I had yeah. like the the jacket, like the jacket, the warm up jacket that the boys wore. I yeah, had, I had that jacket. That's a, oh my god. And I also, have that. a note: my favorite number is fourteen. It's always been fourteen. I forgot why it was fourteen, but then I remember one time I was rewatching High School Musical for some reason. This was a while ago, like probably in high school, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh my god, my favorite number is fourteen because that was Troy Bolton's jersey number." Oh my god! And I just stuck with it ever since. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, okay. What's your next movie? But yeah, they're basically my favorite rom com of all time. Growing up, my grandma showed me all the movies that I knew, and my grandma is a big Hallmark Lifetime rom com type of gal. That is like her shtick. She doesn't really like anything else. So, and she basically raised me because my parents were always working. 
and she always showed me rom-coms and this one in particular I would always ask to watch it I'd be like can we watch it can we watch it can we watch it and that one is how to lose a guy in 10 days I don't feel like enough people talk about it to be honest I really don't everyone's always about 13 going on 30 like that type of deal but like how to lose a guy in 10 days Mm -hmm. I definitely probably shouldn't have been watching it in elementary school no. Like the freaking shower scene alone. Have you ever seen it? I, yes, but I don't know why or how. I just know scenes from it in my head. So I don't know yeah. where that came from. Probably my mom watching it or something. I just loved it also because also, oh wait, when I was growing up, I thought I was going to be, also besides like a musical theater person, I thought I was going to work at a magazine. Like I wanted to be the editor, editor-in-chief right. of Seventeen magazine. But then I realized I don't like writing like articles i hate doing right. that so that dream died um and so andy anderson was like another like main character that i was like yes and also i just thought like it was so i thought it was cool that i was watching it in elementary school because it's kind of like edgy oh, he, edgy like matthew mcconaughey's character rides a motorcycle in new york city and oh he has, he has poker nights and they smoke cigars and they, they say they say bs and they play with their family like i just loved it and also like kate hudson and matt mcconaughey have probably the best on-street chemistry that i've ever seen like i ooh, oh, love it that's a I big claim it. it is like drew barrymore and am sandler pack it up <laughs> pack it yeah. up yeah pack it up pack it up Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey, dude. That's where it's at. And they're still friends today. That's, okay, that's why. That's Okay, I see what you're, Yeah, I support your claim. I love it. I was completely obsessed with it. I'm still obsessed with it. I love that movie. Obviously has issues. Yeah. But I think it's funny. And ones. I also think it's funny that the woman was in control. Like, I think it's so funny that he was the guy. Like, she was doing all this stuff to, like, make fun of him. Yeah, yeah. Because usually it's, like, in rom-coms, the girl's like, pining over the boy yeah but the time it was like a kind of cat and mouse thing. and then nick yeah, yeah. oh, i could go on and on about this movie okay yeah okay. we definitely can do an entire thing on rom-coms and how each gender is portrayed in certain rom-coms because Should. that is a whole thing i yeah. i think that's one of the main reasons why i don't really like rom-coms Love um okay anyway big andy stan news <laughs> Um, so my fourth one is The Woman in Black. It is a very forgettable horror movie. I don't, I don't remember when I tell people about it and they're like, oh yeah, like I, maybe I saw it. It's, okay. So when I was younger, I loved the Harry Potter movies and I like, you don't understand. Like I was, I was the biggest Potterhead and I still am. I'm just, like, we don't, Daniel Radcliffe wrote those books and that, no one will tell me otherwise because we don't <laughs> talk about J.K. Rowling in this house. I um, didn't grow up with Harry Potter. I, oh, I wasn't allowed I even to. know. That's great. Allowed. A lot of people say that to me. Like a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, my parents want to let me watch it," and I don't understand why because they're so. The trap. I, love Harry Potter. I grew it's, up in the South, love. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, anyway, I love Harry Potter, and so the Woman in Black was Daniel Radcliffe's first movie after the Harry Potter movies ended, and they I think they had the trailer for it after um, Deathly Hallows Part Two or like before Deathly Hallows Part Two, and I I was like I I have to watch it. Like, I have to you remember that. Yeah, I was. I specifically remember that because I was like, I told my mom, I was like, we have to watch it. And my mom was like, that's a scary movie. And like, I know, but I want to watch it because my king is in it and I have to support my king. Like, we have to support, um, because he's like, oh, I, I'm not just Harry Potter, you know? He's like trying to show that he can do other roles. Sure so, I think we have to support my king. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. I saw that movie. When I tell you, in that theater, I was like, my hands were clammy. I was shaking the whole time, and my hands were so cold. It's not even that scary of a movie. I don't really remember it, but... Your first um, horror movie, you're always going to... Yes, but I like came out of that theater, and I was like, when's the next one? I loved I loved it, and I, was, I think that's where I started, one, liking horror, but also um, sort of, like, gothic elements in movies and, like, the haunted house genre, Um because it's very much what that movie is about. And I think, also, I feel like that movie doesn't get enough credit. It's a good movie, actually. I'm taking back my claim that it's not, it's, it's a great movie. Everyone go watch it if you like horror movies. I love it, I actually love it. Um, because I think it has, I remember watching an interview. This was the first movie I watched like interviews for. And I remember the director being like, the, hor- the horror in this is, like when, you're, when people in real life talk about like haunted 
houses and like their paranormal experiences everyone's like oh out of the corner of my eye so like when you're watching the movie a lot of the like scary stuff happens like in the corner of the frame Mm -hmm. and like out of eyes Mm -hmm. like view so that like you're not sure if you actually saw that or not you know like you're not sure if the movie did that or if it was playing and i was like yeah i was like that is crazy so anyway i love that movie i should rewatch it i don't think i've seen it since it came out but okay go ahead (laughs) Okay, my last movie is Nightcrawler, which I feel like film people know about, but I don't think the general public really knows about that yeah. movie, right? Okay, I I would say that's the I would say that's a fact. Yeah, I, yeah. I could say, um, an indie movie, but it it wasn't like a blockbuster type of movie because I didn't have money obviously so I just kind of in high school so like I just kind of went along with whatever my parents watch and my parents are definitely the type of people that love Fast and the Furious and like action movies so that's what I was forced to watch and or I would like go and like watch a movie like around the same time as them and I would just meet up with them at the end but I would still watch like pretty popular like big budget movies and I think this is the first movie like that like, I was just getting into, like, film because I had finally decided that's what I was going to do in college. And, like, I had just started applying to, like, schools and, like, for film around the time that this movie came out, which is around, like, homecoming of my senior year. So, like, October. Yeah. 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 So, like, October, like, September, something around there. Um, and I remember um, my best friend, at the time and I we went to go see that movie instead of going to homecoming and because we're quirky (laughs) no not like the other girls I hate dances I absolutely I had I didn't want to go to prom but like I was like you know I should at least go to prom yeah nice um yeah (laughs) and so yeah I want this so like I was just getting to film I had just figured out what the heck indie movies were like actually like up and coming like I figured out how to like find out other movies that weren't like big blockbuster movies you know what I mean yeah yeah. this was the first one I saw and I saw it and I remember just being enamored the entire time I was like this is immaculate this is freaking amazing and I forget the frick what's the director's name but he's also one of my favorite directors and he I can look it up really while you good. continue to... He's just really good, period. What is he? Oh, he did X-Men, right? Something? Oh, my God. Wait. Dan Gilroy. Dan Wait, Gilroy. what's his name? Oh, okay. Just kidding. I didn't know that's who that was. Dan Gilroy. Anyways, yeah. So, like, it's, like, a neo-noir. And, like, I... That kind of introduced me to, like, noir film, neo-noir in general. And... You know, noir is kind of, and like thriller movies are one of my favorite genres to watch. Yeah. And that was like the first one I did. And also like I was in digital media time, like the new show. And like, it's about a guy that like sells footage for new stations. And I was like, oh my God, it's full circle. So it just, at the time of everything, it just felt right. Like for some reason in my head, like watching this movie and thoroughly enjoying it for some reason made me feel like me doing th- film was right weird story but no but i, I think absolutely it... adore that movie and also yeah. my favorite professor and in, in, um, <laughs> my favorite professor in college that was the first movie we watched in our film theory, theory class well one of my favorite professors i have two favorite prof- professors about film which anyways um his the first movie we watched in that class for theory was nightcrawler and i was like if it's stamp of approval by that professor i'm i was right i was right in feeling this way you were right that's a great movie such a good movie if you don't if you haven't watched it go watch it it's such a great movie i feel like nobody talks about it yeah and then okay yeah yeah we could talk about this a whole other thing but we're i think a lot of times in like film schools people shame you for not watching big movies or like like if you haven't seen the godfather you will get attacked but i didn't even like that's not the kind of like i didn't know that movie existed until i I was like got into film school and i was like well i have to watch it because all these men are yelling at me about it and so 
I was just like, well, I guess the same so, men that totally missed the meaning of Fight Club. So yes. Oh, anyway, if we um, get into that. We'll have a whole other hour to this podcast. But <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, good, great choices, all of them. They all, if you look at them all side by side, Wait, you're like, you yeah, that's your last one. No, but I'm talking about you. I was summing yours yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, if you, like, put all the posters side by side and, like, you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's, like, him. Like, yeah. And then you add, like, the ones that I have in my room and it just makes more sense. It, it just makes more makes, sense. It makes yeah. more sense. Anyway, to wrap it all up, the last movie I have um, is Lilo and Stitch. So this is my favorite Disney movie of all time. I love this movie. I get email that's watching this so movie. so much sense. Like, knowing you, that makes so much sense. It's so good. I love movies where it's, like, this like nor- these normal characters and then they're put in a completely random situation so like it's like this little hawaiian family out of water. Yeah, yeah yeah it's like a little hawaiian family and then they get a pet alien which i'm sure you know what the plot of the is about everyone who's listening but um <laughs> i the re- i have a couple of different reasons why i love this movie for one i loved that it was about a family i love writing family dynamics like when i'm like i i remember one of my classes um because like in our screenwriting classes, it's a lot of the same people. You're going with a lot of the same people in these classes. And in one of my classes, uh, we read something for a pilot that I was writing. And the girl was like, you're really good at writing family dynamics. And I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing that I did, like write about families. But she was like, yeah, you always write about fa-. Like all the scripts that I presented in classes or whatever were about families. And the scenes that I picked were like either family fights or like family like art, like bickering or stuff like that. And so she was like, I, I love how you write um family dynamics and I was like I don't even know where that came from and I think it's because of Lilo and Stitch because the way that Lilo and um it was unconventional it was like kind of like the first yeah. unconventional family dynamic that yes and wait what was your sister's name Nani My, the way her and Lilo interact is some of the best thing some of the best writing best acting like everything I love those scenes so much mm-hmm. um and then also Stitch I love Stitch and I love aliens and I love I love how you're in this you're like learning about like hawaii like you know you know lilo's universe but you also know stitch's universe and you know how the dynamics work in the alien world you know about the government of the alien world um and then also the ending is just so cute and like it is. like oh, it's so it's cute. Up. i love lilo i think for me lilo and stitch like that i thought i looked like her so like oh. like i love that movie and i definitely adopted a personality trait from her which was um liking elvis presley okay <laughs> well, that's so random um but yeah lilo and stitch is a great movie and it's, it's really good it's i should watch that movie yeah. again and also it I'll had like it. it also had like the mean girl trope but it lilo was like no i'm not having it and i was like love yes her. lilo and also lilo. yeah 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 but also in this, I, I watched like the TV show. I watched all the, like all three yeah, other movies. I was just movies. About to say if you watched the TV show. I would love I, the TV show. I had the book. I think I have it somewhere next to me. But it's it, it was a book with every um, experiment and all the numbers. I was obsessed with every I little like book. I couldn't. I, I I would just sit in Barnes and Noble and look at it. I, I may have cried um, at the Scholastic Book Fair. Um, so that my parents would buy it for me. So we don't even <laughs> talk about that. But I was obsessed with how like there was all these little like creatures and they each had different powers. I was like, oh my God. I still think it's one of the best things that has ever been made. I love Lilo and Stitch. I love that world. I never, I don't think it's ever, it's not really in people's list as like the best Disney movies, which is weird because it's like, it's so good. It It is is. so good. And that was my first introduction to Hawaiian culture too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even know what California was until I moved to it. So like, okay. <laughs> that tells you anything about Virginia. Well, also I feel like back when we were growing up, we, no one had iPhones. Like it wasn't like. That's true. We had like no access to internet. Yeah. I was like, Disney Channel is my threshold. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that was like about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Lilo is a Disney princess and that is it. That is all I have to say. And period. And period. And period. Okay. Anything you want to add before we sign off? Um, I think what I've noticed, at least from us, like, talking about the movies that we love and also just, like, in general, like, just our experiences and stuff, I think it's really interesting how, like, starkingly different our takes are. But, like, we work so well together, I feel like. So, 
that's just another thing I think I would like to point out. And yes. I think, yeah, like I feel like you've introduced me to like a lot of different things that I normally wouldn't and I, I don't know, vice versa, if by, vice versa. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, so that's Well, like, not only that, but I think we also like the reason that, like we're completely different people in terms of what we like, what we like writing. But when you, for example, like our short film, when you asked me to write that, it was like, at that point, I had only re- really written horror. Um, and when you told me to write it, it was like a thriller. And so I was like, oh, like I've never written something like this before. And so, yes, there are some horror elements in that story. Like just a little bit, just a little bit towards the yeah. end. Um, a little bit more thrillery, but I was it like, it challenged toes. me. Yeah. Our movie keeps you on your toes. That's for It sure. really does. And so I was like, wow, this is great. And so now, like literally since then i have i don't think i've written anything horror since then i've written like a bunch of different genres because i was like i was like wait i can can write other things i thought i could only write horror but i was like wait i can write other things yeah that's nice oh yeah i'm writing like a thriller rom-com that never i never would have expected that from me the one thing the reason why my mouth dropped so low for a second was because i think atg is literally like the perfect mix of us i think it's us like in embodiment into like a short film which for everyone who literally doesn't know so literally everyone oh. it, it's all that glitters um Besides and we'll glenn talk and darby. About it. hey glenn and darby yeah, yeah. hey glenn and darby yeah. uh to everyone who we, we are gonna um i'm sure when it's closer to being finished we'll talk about it a little bit more um we'll have some of those people who worked with us on the podcast um yeah. uh, our guest next week is someone who worked with us on the part on the yes. short film so that's exciting she made her break she if we didn't have this person i don't think the movie would have been i think she really completed my vision which is yes. weird because i definitely am a person i'm like this is what i this is what i'm thinking yeah and i'm just like i'm like is anybody understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. And she and does. Think, oh my god, we're gonna okay. We're, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the short film a little bit, and then like maybe a little bit about the podcast. But um, I think the reason why I had so much fun working on the movie was because everyone brought something to the table, and it it literally if one single person would have been taken out of that, it would not have mm-hmm. been the movie that it is. Definitely, and I think for me, like the biggest thing, like going at the beginning was like, I was always like, especially with the actors too, like at our table read, I was like, if there's anything that doesn't make sense, if like, whatever, like, please tell me, like, I want like your opinion, like, because you're the ones that are gonna have to act it out. So if it doesn't make sense for you, because you're embodying that character, then like, let us know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I don't know, I'm so proud of that film. Me too. And it hasn't even been finished yet. It will be. Um, when it's out, we're going to do so much promo for it because we worked so hard on that. And that movie, like, we worked on that for months, months, months. And it's still not even done. It's been like a year. It's been, a year. It's been, it's been so long. Um, so, yes, I'm excited for that to come out. Um, for and me, then also, it's been five years. I've been well, yeah. This story forever. But also, yeah. I remember you giving me that story to read when you had finished it. Like the first mm-hmm. time I remember reading it, like so I I know. Podcast about that. We should do an episode about that, like when yeah. it comes out. Like, oh, one hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then um, that's our short film. Um, all the glitters. We'll talk about that a little bit more closer to when it's coming out. Um, so yeah. Um, anything else you want to say about this podcast in specific? I think I'm just very excited because I think both of us have a really good feeling. Um, We have absolutely no idea what is to come, but we both, Mm -hmm. I feel like, have been getting good energy and, like, this is what we are meant to be doing at this very moment. And we just hope, we're just manifesting, we're putting out in the universe that, like, it all works out because I genuinely feel so strongly about this. Like, I think this is, like, one of the coolest things I do yeah like i'm like and it's the episode one like i'm so proud of this and we haven't even done anything yet <laughs> yeah same i i i love i think this concept is so why am i, I, don't, I don't, crying stop <laughs> i don't even think it's it's honestly not just for us i think it's i'm so excited to highlight some of our friends that i personally think i'm so i think they have so much to bring to like hollywood i think they have so many cool insights i think they have so many good ideas um and i feel like i i want to highlight them i want to be like look look at them um so 
I kind of want this podcast to be a little like, if someone's like, who should I hire? Be like, come look at this podcast. We have plenty of options for you to pick exactly. from. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just so excited. And I'm, I think another big thing is like, we always want to keep learning about other people's perspectives. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a big fault in Hollywood currently is like, nobody's actually giving the time to try and listen to the people's perspective that you're making the stories about. And like, that's huge. And like yeah. learning perspective will, perspective is huge. And like learning about other people's identities and cultures is just, I think just good for human life in general. And I think more people need that. And if you get it from this tiny little podcast that we have, we did our job. And yeah, exactly. Period. Just, next week we're gonna have our beautiful friend Marilyn come on so and we're gonna be talking about how coronavirus and COVID and all this madness in our world is going to affect the future of, of film. Super yeah. exciting. <gasps> Did you see uh, Robert Robert Pattinson got coronavirus? Did you see that? Did you know? No. He got coronavirus on the set of Batman because they started filming again. And I don't know, I guess they weren't ready. He got coronavirus. I saw it on Variety. Anyway, and we'll end on that. Well, one more thing is I, we're going to plug our social media. Um, we did just start an, on Instagram for this podcast. It's our period Hollywood, like period, like the dot, not like the word period. Yeah. Um, and so on there, we're going to play before each episode, we're going to put a little highlight for the guests that we're going to have on. And then we're also going to, um, highlight the movies and TV shows that we're going to talk about so you can kind of like maybe like look into them or maybe if you're like interested in those movies you're going to be like well I'll listen to this week's podcast um, and then see a little bit more maybe follow some cool people that are also trying to do some cool things yeah love it yeah I'm really excited I have to watch some things to get prepared mm-hmm. love in the time of coronavirus <laughs> I just saw it on Hulu gonna go watch that this week and yeah i hope that entices you to watch yes to listen to everyone yeah because i'm still thank you everyone for listening um and come to the next one we're excited about it so hopefully you are too i'm literally fist pumping goodbye